person leave a comment today. Today I am going to talk about uh, Eva Brown. Uh, Eva, it was the unhappiest woman in the Third Reich. I've forgotten who said that, but it was uh, somebody of importance who actually knew her for many years. I think she's quite a mysterious character. Um, uh, Albert Speer said that uh, the histo historians will be upset, or was, will be disappointed, sorry. His history, historians will be uh, disappointed by Eva Brown. I don't think so at all. She left us some of the most memorable um, films uh, and photographs showing the behind the scenes scenes uh, at, in, in, in Hitler's entourage. And for that, and they're also very skillfully done, uh, given the fact uh, that the, you know, the equipment that they had then. And so um, I think that uh, she is somebody definitely who is interesting. But to talk about her, I need to go back before she was born. I've got to go back um, a long time. And we'll talk, first of all, about Hitler's family. So Hitler's father, Alois, he married a lady who was much older than himself, and he got this uh, lady, Francisca, to come in to do the housework and to look after the place. Now, his first wife was a lot older than him, but Francisca was a lot younger. And he could see the benefits of uh, trading in his older wife for a, a younger one, and that's precisely what he did. And he divorced the first wife and married the Francisca, the, the help. Uh, and in 1883, Angela, came along. She was the produce of this bridge, uh, so to speak. Um, now, uh, Francisca died very young, and then uh, Alois uh, got married again. He, he married Paula, who was also the hired help. I wonder if Francisca saw what was coming, but it didn't matter. She died anyway. And, uh, and with Paula, he had Adolf and uh, others. So, and um, anyway, so um, Angela, um, six years older than her half brother, uh, she went off to Vienna and there she met somebody called Leo Rabal and she married Leo. Leo was a junior tax um, officer. He worked in the, some, wasn't a sort of tax consultant, something like he was, he worked in the tax office. And um, there, what they produced, was Gelly in 1908. Uh, unfortunately, um, Leo died in 1910. He was only 31 years old, leaving Angela with Gelly. And uh, it must have been very difficult for a single mother in those days. Anyway, meanwhile, uh, Adolf uh, comes along. He does his thing and he is in prison. And when, he, and when he's in prison, he's got all of these dreams about what he's going to do when he gets out. And he uh, not only was he a dreamer, but he sort of he was the sort of person that always wanted to have money he didn't. He wanted to spend money he didn't have. But he, uh, that he had a number of wealthy backers and he sort of dreamed of a really flash uh, Mercedes, which he ordered whilst he was in prison. And he also got himself... Uh, quite quickly afterwards, a rather flash place to live, and he got a housekeeper, obviously the housekeeper to look after the place, and who better to ask than his half sister Angela, and their young, uh, 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 her young uh, young daughter. So uh, they're living in uh, Munich, and um, and they're living they're living in Munich together. And uh, Hitler ends up having sort of a relationship with his half niece, so his half sister's daughter, which is uh, rather odd. When this relationship started, I don't know. And I'm unable to say what type of relationship. Uh, but um, to me, to my mind, it's verging on pedophilia. Um, he was 40. Uh, and she was 17 at uh, the time they appear to have got together. Of course, I don't know because I wasn't a part of all the things that they were talking about. In 1927, uh, Hitler had a, a driver called Emil Maurice 
and he was a locksmith. Died in Munich in 1970, but he wasn't too willing to talk about what had happened in the early days. And um, he's also half Jewish. And uh, it appears that um, Gelly and Emil were, I don't know what they were doing. Uh, but anyway, Adolf refused to allow them to see each other. And he, so he went berserk. Anyway, Gelly was quite upset about this. Now, Gelly enrolled at their Munich University uh, studying medicine. and But she didn't really get very far with the, the course. Uh, now, the, the rest of this story, we know from what Angela told the American interrogator after the war. Uh, it seems as though Angela had somehow met some other gentleman who was uh, an Austrian and she wanted to go back to Vienna to be with him. Adolf was incredibly jealous and refused to uh, to allow this to happen. And anyway, uh, Heinrich Hoffmann, whom I'm going to come on to in a moment, and uh, Hitler uh, went off to Nuremberg for some party do. And whilst they were there, Angela got... Uh, sorry, not Angela, Gelly, the daughter, uh, got Hitler's gun, a, a Walter 7.6mm, uh, shot herself. Now, whether or not she meant to kill herself, I can't say, but when you shoot yourself, it's a rather dodgy and dangerous game to play. And if you want to make a demonstration, I think there's better ways of doing it. But in Gelly's case, it was fatal. She died. She shot herself through the lung and she died as a result. And Hitler was absolutely distraught. He was so distraught, in fact, that he couldn't even bring himself to go to the funeral. Although, two days later, he went to the St. Friedhof, the central cemetery in Vienna, and he went to the grave, to the grave, or whatever you do in situations like this. And then he um, went back to being politics. Unfortunately, it didn't put him off uh, doing that. But he said that... Uh, she was the only woman he could ever love, uh, the great love of his life. And he kept her house, uh, sorry, her room in his house on, uh, on the Ober Salzburg in exactly the same state. And he had her photograph uh, on, on the Birkhof at, at, at his chancery. And it was like she was always there for him. Now, uh, this... Uh, okay, I accept the fact that 17 years old, that is um, legal, but to my way of thinking, it's not only, it borders on incest and it borders on others might think differently. And anyway, now let's go back in time. In 1919, Hitler, okay, the World War, War ends. Hitler uh, is in hospital when it ends, uh, after it, 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 he's in, near, in Passavalk, near Berlin. Uh, and then he comes back to Munich. When he's in Munich in 1919, he meets Heinrich Hoffmann, who was a photographer. And um, so the two of them really hit it off. After the war, Hoffmann wrote the book, I Was Hitler's Friend. He may have been one of the very few. Albert Speer said he was uh, probably the best friend of Hitler. But Heinrich Hoffmann said the same thing. I think Heinrich Hoffmann was more of the best friend. Heinrich Hoffmann was older than Hitler. Albert Speer, if anything, was like a son figure to him. So uh, Hoffmann had a uh, photographic uh, business in Munich, and um, which he'd been doing for some time. Indeed, uh, it's, he was, fil he was um, photographing in the um, central square in, in Munich on the day that war broke out, Hitler said he was there, and lo and behold, Hoffman found a photograph with Hitler in it. What a nice present to give somebody. I don't believe it's the real thing, but the important thing was that Hitler believed it was the real thing, and uh, so the present actually worked. Um, Hitler used to drop in to see Hoffman and his wife, and one day in 19... 29 he uh, came by and uh, they introduced them to their new photographic assistant uh, who was uh, Eva Brown and uh, Hoffman said that Hitler said oh she's a nice little thing or something like that and um, so uh, 
obviously Hitler must have suggested they went out somewhere. So we know they did things. They went to the park. They went to a um, um, a, 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 a took her for a meal. He took her to the cinema. But all the time, bear in mind that Gelly was uh, around and alive and they were living in the same place. It was only after Gailey committed suicide in 1931 that it appears that Eva moved into his life. Now, uh, Eva was clearly very impressionable, so she was uh, also extremely young when she met Hitler. So, uh, and um, the uh, relationship <clears throat> was one where she appears to be infatuated by him, completely infatuated by him. Now, there's a um, a diary of Eva Brown. Now, I mean, there's, there's two. There's a f fake one, which I might come on to, and there's a real one. I did a video on this subject. And uh, what we know, what we can see, though, is this, is that when, when, in... in um, in the in the scene in in downfall 23rd of april 1945 and she's writing a um a letter and she's about destroying a private correspondence and uh, her, her private correspondence and a diary was destroyed however she had previously requested that a period of her life uh the the pages be torn out and be destroyed however these pages survived anyway i actually dictated it uh, in, into the uh, into the microphone and um the um so you can actually hear it in, in a in the video but, but uh what what this shows is her total obsession with hitler uh it's like he, he is her entire life but she can't have him and she can't be with him because he's too bo too busy uh doing other things um uh ever um also uh attempted suicide now i say this uh not knowing if it was a real attempt or if it wasn't a real attempt but ever attempted suicide and um uh, hitler took a little bit more interest in her now the second attempt she uh, makes uh in uh, after this he sees that she's really serious now the uh that's the period of a diary it's the diary leads up from her birthday in february to the suicide attempt in may and then you uh, get uh, a feeling of how, what it is this thing oh he hasn't got time for me he can't see me he can't do this can't do that he can't do the other now the thing is this the this demonstration actually worked on hitler and he thought, right, so he, he got he arranged the house for her in Munich, and then uh, he got a better one for her, and then he allowed her to move into his place, uh, which was uh, at the Berghof uh, above uh, uh, Berchtesgaden. And uh, so there she became, uh, in a way, the hostess of the house, although she was never there in an official capacity until many years later. And um, the uh, but it was clear that she was boss. And there was one incident that took place in 1935. It was around the time of the party conference, which would have been in September. And then Angela was still the housekeeper, even though he had died four years earlier. And uh, um, it's not clear precisely what happened, but there was some kind of a conflict. And I could maybe understand that Angela didn't like the fact that this other girl was around, girl note, I mean, she a daughter figure, even younger than her own daughter, two years younger than her own daughter. What was she doing there? Sort of thing. So you can, you can imagine the potential uh, conflict. Anyway, Angela was sent away as a, as a result of this conflict. Um, now, um, Eva continued to work for uh, Hoffman. And uh, she, uh, in around 1935, also, she got a job as a photographer for him. I think that Heinrich probably did this for his mate, Hitler. Um, I think. 
because this gave them an excuse to be together. Because as she was a photographer, she could travel around with them and therefore they could be together at the conferences and whatever else he was doing. She had an excuse to be there. Now, Hitler's idea was that a leader, uh, he had this sort of Nordic idea that he, I don't know if it's even Nordic or Volkish or what, but, but he was sort of married to the people as such. So he had to maintain a sort of chaste existence and he couldn't be seen to be hanging around with uh, women. At least that's the way he, he, saw, he saw it. And uh, I mean, rather difficult to explain this one. It wasn't a case of him trying to keep her a secret from the public, as for example, Putin might do today. He wants to keep his family out of things, and uh, which I suppose is a, is a good uh, position to be in, rather than be seen with his wife and uh, doing whatever whatever they do. And uh, so Hitler was very much in this position. But of course, he wasn't married anyway. It was just it was just his it, it, she was just his partner. Now, when they were together as well, there was the problem that anything official happened she was sort of banished from the table they did sort of have me meals together but you get the feeling that he would say things occasionally which really put her down for example uh i think it was uh, Speer who, who commented on this who said that hitler said something at the table like um the greater the man the more insignificant the woman has to be um and i mean how could she feel with that and there were lots of comments of this nature of uh, the uh, no, the importance that the man is somehow superior in whatever way, and the woman is there to serve the man. Th these were ideas. Actually, I think it was quite common ideas of the time. So, uh, except the one about the ins insignificant woman, uh, but she's there. And she's got to take it all in. But she remained uh, absolutely devoted to him, and you can even see this in some of the photographs. There's one photograph. Uh, of them together, I think it's from about 1940, but at the Eagle's Nest, because he hardly ever went up there, but she used to go up very frequently. But anyway, the two of them together, you can see the way she's looking at him really lovingly. Incidentally, there's a there's a Russian, uh, sorry, a Soviet film from around 1948 or 49. I can't, I can't remember the name of it now, but the, the woman who plays uh, Eva Brown, and uh, you can see that the way that the lo the way she looks on him so lovingly. I, I think this actress there is is really brilliant in this uh, in, in this role. So um, uh, the not being able to show her off publicly is a problem. There's two things happened though. In in during the Olympics in 1936, she did appear in official uh, German publications quite next to him and in 1939 um i did a little video of this because i found the photographs in time um there were photographs of ever brown at the at ober salzburg and uh, and it was quite clear that that she, uh, from that she was hitler's partner uh, but this uh, i i presume was never actually published in germany i mean there's plenty of people who said that they knew nothing about her uh, until until afterwards. Uh, now, um, Eva ran the roost in uh, Ober, Salzburg, Ober Salzburg, but uh, she didn't often, she was very rarely in Berlin. Magda Goebbels knew, and there was conflict between the two. There was once when Magda Goebbels asked Eva to tie her shoelaces. To, uh, obviously that was to put her down, but Eva got around this very cleverly by ringing the bell, summoning the maid and asking her to do it instead by all accounts that she was a very good hostess and uh, she looked after people there even though this was uh, not uh, part of her official uh, role now but in in politics she played absolutely no part but she did have a tiny bit of influence and here's something from albert Speer: in uh, the spring of 1943 uh, that went so there's the St stalingrad total war and so now uh, as this total war things related to the consumer market have to be closed and it needs to be pointed out that in in the first world war uh, and in for example the united kingdom Moloch, yes. Um, in the United Kingdom, 
in the in the Second World War, the consumer market was more or less closed down completely. Um, and but, but Hitler kept this up, uh, kept it open because he believed it was good for morale, and uh, that's that that is I think understandable. Of course, it came at the cost, and that was because the cost of the, the consumer goods were being produced in, for example, Poland or France or whatever, uh, and uh, they were being taken from those places. Uh, but anyway, uh, there was uh, on the hair perming machines uh there was that they had to be removed and it was ever brown uh, ever brown sorry I, I i often pronounce words in german as i learned them before i learned what little german i know and i can still say things uh which are incorrect occasionally like i just did now so i have ever brown um ever brown um uh, uh, complained to Hitler about this and he, and he said okay well you can leave them there until they break down but they can't be repaired or something like that there was also problems with the production of cosmetics and she intervened on that one as well and uh, the thing was this though people all, all sorts of people coming up to Hitler and complaining about this that and the other and uh, so so it, whatever the policy was you just get got more and more and more watered down and I, th I think that's the same as it um, happens everywhere with any type of policy uh, that they get all sorts of ministers coming in so oh, we're an exception we're an exception until the end everybody's an exception anyway so um uh, now, Eva had uh, two sisters, and one sister didn't like uh, the Nazis at all, and she kept well and truly out of it. But her second sister, Margarita uh, Gretel, uh, she uh, used to hang out at uh, Berchtesgaden a lot. Uh, we'd see her in, in the, and their mates. And, and so occasionally you actually see Ilsa in some of the films that ever produced so in and around Berchtesgaden and if you haven't been there it is an absolutely fantastic place to visit I mean I'm not just talking about the Hitler stuff but the natural beauty worthwhile I for me it is a uh, of uh, Berchtesgaden and Salzburg which is more or less next door to each other in Salzburg. I, it is absolutely it is wonderful i spent what about two and a half weeks there in 2017 and to me um wonderful anyway just a look there but uh, one of the places is a lake uh which is uh which stretches down the austrian border Königsee, and um the, uh, you can get on the boat and in fact the only way actually a lot part of the year is by boat because there aren't, aren't roads at least the roads were closed when i was there I was there at the beginning of May, uh, but it was that, because the winter was quite long that year, so that might not. And behind that is Orbitzee. There's another lake, incredibly attractive, really wonderful. And I've got lots of their films and photographs uh, from there with her family and friends, which is something. She also did other excursions uh, in the area, and so so, um, which is also nice to see. Uh, um, uh, Eva was uh, noted for a gymnastic ability at school. So at school, she got sort of average grades, uh, but but in gymnasts and things that she was very. And you can see how fit she is, even uh, when she's uh, well into her thirties, and she can still do all sorts of handstands and uh, really uh, very good, very good condition uh, uh, physically. And now um, her sister. Uh, by through uh, being at um, at, at Berchtesgaden, met Fegelein, uh, who became uh, somewhat famous thanks to, thanks to the downfall, and they got married on the third of June, nineteen forty-four. Now this was really good news for Eva, because it meant that now she could be at the uh, uh, not not just at Hitler's place, Birkhoff officially, but also in Berlin and other places. She had a role. She was the sister of the wife of Fegelein, who was the liaison officer at, uh, at Hitler's headquarters for Himmler. So uh, she had this really good reason to be there, and um, and uh, therefore. Um, uh, the uh, th this allowed her this greater contact. It needs to be pointed out also that they didn't actually share a, a bedroom or anything like that, but their bedrooms were close together. Even in the bunker, where there must have been a terrible lack of space. Um, and uh, actually, when I was in Berlin, I actually walked it 
uh, um, I just sort of mapped it out by myself. So I pasted it. Uh, I might not have got exactly the right position, but you can see it's for the amount of people who are in there. Um, admittedly, it wasn't two floors, but but even so, it's really really small amount of space. It must have been pretty un uh, un un uncomfortable. But anyway, uh, so um, but they, even there in the bunker, they didn't uh, have have a room uh, together. So. Uh, this this was uh, this was a problem. Now, in the summer of 1944, Hitler stayed at Berchtesgaden until the 16th, 15th, or 16th of July, 16th of July, I think it was uh, 1944, and then he left ever. And uh, four, day, uh, four days later, 20th of July, there was an attempt of blowing him up at uh, Kenchen at uh, um, Rastenburg in, in German, and um, then. Uh, but obviously, Eva Eva wasn't around. She was in uh, she was in Munich. She voluntarily came to Berlin uh, in uh, February of 1945, but she went back. But in April 1945, she came back to the bunker again and stayed with Hitler until the very end. Loyalty until death. And um, uh, so she ended up told uh, Henriette, Henriette von Schirach. Uh, before this, going to stay with him forever. Uh, she was she wasn't going to let him die on his own. She was going to die with him. And all accounts are that she was absolutely calm up until the moment of death. Now the uh, very good uh, actress who plays a part, Juliet something or other, plays a part in Downfall, and um, uh, approximately the same age as well because Juliet was born in 1965. So that was yeah she'd been met what 37, 38 when that was filmed. And um, I think, though, that the role that she plays was one of more domineering than ever actually was, because she's sort of in the film. I get the impression that she's more or less the hostess of the bunker, so to speak. And the the calmness that 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 was reported by others actually uh, comes across. There is one little thing, though, I would have to point out. There was this. Uh, they had only had one record. Uh, which is this, called Blood Red Roses. And um, I did a video on, actually I finished it about two, three days ago, and it's it's, it's being uploaded now, uh, of Hitler's last birthday. And I, I wanted to put this on, and then I forgot to do, I forgot to, forgot to put it on the, on the, on the, uh, so whenever I update uh, the video, it'll, it'll, it'll be on that. Um, the, um, there's a thing when she says, as as we, the comment came across just now, that uh, let's let's have some swing. Uh, I don't think that actually happened. Actually, um, there was no there's no doubt in my mind that they did have. She liked swing, which was well, it wasn't forbidden, but it was uh, frowned upon. Um, but uh, she liked that type of music. She was said after the war by her employer Heinrich Hoffmann that she was a um, I'm trying to know exact words now. Feather-brain type of. She was a feather-brained girl who was only interested in clothes, sport, and something else. Clothes, sport, and makeup, or something. Uh, I think that was it. Um, which seems fair enough to me. Well, it's better than going around killing people, isn't it? Um, so uh, th th she married Hitler. That's what she wanted. That was her ambition. She must have been supremely happy she got what she wanted at the very end so in a way her life was a success um okay um 30th of april around 1500 or thereabouts in the afternoon uh the two of them killed themselves um there's a rather strange thing about this actually because i just thought of this today just before the came this guncher who was hitler's uh, valet he said that he couldn't hear the shot but he could smell the um the the powder the 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 now um i thought that was quite odd because it seems that ever and others um trudel uh, um and others chowdel sorry uh used to smoke in the bunker and i'm sure that hitler would have been aware of that i mean don't fall this small doesn't mean to say because it was in the film that it's actually correct but i don't know yeah cordite um, now you can cordite is absolutely distinctive smell and it hangs around and and anybody's been in the military will will, will recognize it and uh, yeah it gets on your clothes and all the rest of it but one shot 
I think this was something to do with the air in the um in, in the bunker um there's also something strange about this as well because it's also reported by others and shown in in in, in downfall that uh the goebbels's son shouted bullseye um when shot uh, was heard by him so i don't know how guncher didn't hear it and the son did and but he could smell it i don't know i can't explain any of that but anyway um after her death in 1948, there was a court case in which a uh, person, an Austrian a filmmaker, uh, Trecker, um, uh, claimed to have her diary been given. To, he claimed it had been given to her, him by her in Kitzbühel in 1942. And uh, actually, I did try tracking where he uh, she was in uh, on the date he claimed, and it seemed to me to be possible. But the diary was an absolute fake. I mean, it was just it was just nonsensical. And the family got it stopped in court in 1948. Um, the Evers body was buried with that of Adolf's in the back. And uh, oh, I forgot to mention the really important thing here. Blondie was killed on the 29th of April by the dog handler. And but and Blondie had pups. They were also killed by the dog handler. But the big question is, what happened to Evers' two terriers? They were also killed by the same person. There you go. Don't say, don't learn anything useful on my channel. So um, Hitler was the one stroking the terrier. Heinrich Hoffman took a photograph, and Hitler said, "No, you can't publish that because uh, a great leader can only be seen." Uh, uh, stroking a great dog like an Alsatian. That's why you'll never see me stroking a terrier in any videos that I do. It's only a Japanese um, fighting dog. Anyway, so uh, Eva was buried. Uh, sorry, Eva was buried. Eva was burnt with Adolf. And then uh, later there was the Goebbels family in general, Krebs. Uh, they were they were sort of a bit burnt. Uh, well, Krebs wasn't burnt at all. And uh, the Soviet remains of the bodies and they saw they, they buried them in various places uh, until in 1946. They buried them in the garden in uh, of uh, the Smirsch, uh, that uh, KG, uh, sorry, NKVD uh, unit. They had a building in Magdeburg. You can see that in that location in the video where it was buried because I went there and filmed it. And in 1970, uh, uh, the building was to be handed over to the Stasi and uh but they couldn't allow hitler's remains to be there so they dug them up and then they took them to a forest to the east of magdeburg and then from the there from, they tipped them into a river um off a bridge called schweinebrücke the, the pig's bridge and so uh, that is where she ended up, and you can see the location because I went there and filmed it using information I got from archive in Moscow, uh, which I will, I'm highly unlikely ever to see again. <laughs> okay, so that is the story of Ever Brown. And uh, right, so can I, can I, can I come back now to answer some of these questions? Hello, Jessica. Hello, Janet. Hello, Hank. Hello, Jerry. Oh, Jerry says this. Yeah, let's play some swing. Actually, I did see that when I was speaking. So that, that's why I actually mentioned that's why I mentioned it. Uh, hello, Brian. All right. Uh, C says I'm very interested in this topic because I watched some home videos where she was flirting with and even kissing some guys closer to her age. It made me wonder if she was using Hitler for her position. I wouldn't. I don't think so. I have uh, to ever ever was utterly infatuated by uh, Adolf. Uh, Adolf was very jealous. Uh, we know that from what happened with Gailey. And but I don't think at all. I, I personally, I'm convinced of, of of this. We've got these two suicide attempts as well. Also, Hitler. Well, he didn't show much interest. He didn't. Uh, this is the, this is the thing which is really what made Hitler uh, such a person. That two women attempted suicide because of him. I mean, one of them might have been trying to escape from him, but it, it, this this is odd, um, which is difficult to understand. I mean, on her birthday in 1937, uh, he gave her a book on Egyptian pyramids. 
and okay later then i mean which you know if you're in egyptology maybe that's fair enough but uh, but um it's not the sort of thing you give your partner in my opinion and uh, but he improved uh his um his his his, his birthday a gift uh ideal later when you give her a fur coat but but it was it was just the way he treated her which seems to be quite odd. He did also give her other stuff as well. And in, in Downfall, um, there was a pendant, uh, as I seem to recall, and, uh, which turned uh, the, which I believe there was a, a, the family of Ever Brown tried to recuperate, or somebody was in the family tried to recuperate from the, uh, not, not that long ago, uh, from the uh, Barbarian state. Didn't, didn't work. But um, anyway, uh, all right. Uh, so. Um, so I don't think I think she absolutely loved her. Hello, Colin. Uh, hello, hello, sweepstakes, and uh, hello, Paige, Annie. Uh, did J did Gailey really commit suicide? I thought there was an element of doubt surrounding her. Right, there is an element of doubt, yes, but but I don't think um, Hitler had nothing. To, well, sorry, as, as far as I can tell, he had nothing, he wasn't there at the time, but I mean, I suppose he could have killed and then sort of made it look as though he. No, I don't believe that. Um, no, I think she committed suicide. Um, I mean, it is it is odd there, because this was the, uh, 1929. Sorry, 1931. Hitler was coming through uh, in, in in the elections. He was becoming more important. Uh, his party was pretty important, and um, this made him a laughing stock. Of the uh, this was published in the press. We can find. Uh, articles uh, about it written from the time and this was this was quite amusing for them and so that the, this this actually happened to him so this was a good point to actually dig it dig at him with um i think he killed her at all. no i i i um or anybody else for that matter uh oh sorry oh sorry 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 I've lost. I've I've lost where we are because I haven't learned how this sort of thing actually works. Uh, hello, Brian. Sorry, sorry. And uh, yeah, yeah. So Brian says Hitler had a lot in this plate. No time for chicks. Uh, yeah, the chick drama um, in the film uh, Mussolini and I, which I think brilliant. And nobody else does. Uh, there's this really good scene with uh, Mussolini, and he's got a problem with uh, Clara Patacci, his mistress, and his wife Raffaella, and uh, they, they, they confront each other, and um, I, I, and he's got all this other stuff, all these the wars, the war, uh, wars for uh, the countries falling to bits. Uh, Hitler's uh, getting on his nerves. He's and and then he's got his problems with these women. So. Uh, yeah. Um, anyway, Paige asked, do, you, do I think that Eva was kept up knowledge about the Holocaust and the terrible things happened? I can't decide if she's just an innocent or not. I'm convinced she, she knew she would have had no, there's no reason to know anything about it. Hitler utterly would not discuss business at the table. He didn't do it. He didn't discuss these things uh, in public. Uh, there's no doubt uh, that he he did some other place. He, and there's, it could be said he had a sort of a split personality. I don't think that Hitler had a split personality. I think he had his business side and his home side. Um, I, I must to a certain extent, I'm a bit like that when I get out I mean, in sort of business room, or, or, or I, I change a bit. But uh, in uh, uh, now in my home way, uh, which 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 is a different different side of the character. But I think there's nothing unusual about this, and. Um, so uh, even, for example, um, when Schusnig, the Austrian chancellor, was uh, in, uh, in, in, in March 19, um, 19, 1938, he went, Hitler was more shouting at him and doing all sorts of things. And then he asked him if he wanted to eat and he became completely different. He, he, now he was in his domestic mood. He was, he was, he was, he was charming again. Uh, but, but as far as this is concerned, I am con never discussed anything like this indeed um if like Charles Junger for example only found out these things at the, at the end and I, I mean she said that and I believe her I mean it's not um I, the the he he passed orders verbally we know that he passed on the uh, he told the Gauleiters of the Holocaust on the 30th uh, 12th of uh, December 1941 uh, that we know 
that 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 it was going to happen, or in fact, it was all it had already started because the the mass shootings have been going on now for a number of months, and the first uh, gassing had taken place four days earlier. So when the Gauleiters came to Berlin for the meeting of the Reichstag, uh, which uh, where Hitler declared war on the United States, the um, uh, that was when he told them that the uh, Holocaust. Uh, was going to happen and we know that uh, we've got separate um, sources we've got uh, Goebbels's diary we've got uh, Hans Frank what he wrote uh, and also there's going to be a follow-up conference and who was going to go there so that is that that it that 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 one's pretty clear to me actually I did a video on this one as well so <laughs> uh, well something's happened here oh no there it is uh, so hello, uh, yeah. Uh, Otto says that the Soviet film on Hitler was, I believe, called Moloch, although it was in 1999. No, that wasn't the one I was thinking, so it wasn't Moloch. Um, and uh, yeah, Janet says brown means brown, English, and also pronounced so. Yes, I know it's pronounced the same, but unfortunately, brown is pronounced brawn in my dialect, and that's why I say it that way. Uh, yeah, Fagerlein, Fagerlein. Have I done a video on Josef Mengele? Look, I have been writing this on Josef Mengele. I have been writing about how Mengele escaped since 2019. I was in the village where he was hiding. Uh, I stayed there for mm, about three weeks or so. And um, uh, and uh, out in the read. And uh, that's where he, he, uh, well, I think he even filmed the church he, he used to go to. And... Um, Sorry, it's got dark all of a sudden. If I move to one side, yeah, maybe because you see the sun moves. That's that's the problem. And uh, so yeah, I started this. I've got I've got it some. I've got stacks, uh, but I, I just don't feel. See, my plan with Mengele was I was gonna do the route he took. So he's from Auschwitz in uh, January 1945 to Grossrosen to he was in Northern Czechoslovakia been to the POW camps he was held in, in one of the places the mayor of the town offered to take me there himself. Sorry, I'll, if I come around that, is that any better? Yeah, you know, sort, sort of a bit better, isn't it? And um, uh, so I'll move, I'll move this up a bit. Oops. There we go. Is that, no, it's not, that's not better, is it? There. And um, so uh, definitely I, I'll do it one day, but I, I even got, I had the uh, the, the list of passengers on, on the ship he, he was on and the overwhelming majority of them had Jewish names. I found it on the internet. It wasn't, wasn't actually all that difficult to find. And uh, anyway, um, uh, yeah, I, 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 I agreed to go to the place where he was hiding in Italy. I found the owners of it. And I, you know, I've done so much research on this Mengele project. And yet, yet it's just sort of sitting there on my computer doing, doing nothing. And... Uh, that that's that's the problem so um there's still no still no mengele uh yeah there will be there will be one day <laughs> um oh thank you alan thank you and uh and uh, uh otto ter terriers are aren't butch enough and uh right so uh, he's good loves love is everything the world revolves around hitler why why the obsession yeah well that's a good question so uh if anyone knows the answer to that please put it in the comments section uh and uh yeah so colin said must get a bit crowded in the motel with you and the uh and uh tosha uh tosha is no longer alive unfortunately she died um September of last two years ago. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but she, she wouldn't be able to get in this one because there's two steps, external steps into this one, whereas the other one had an in, one internal step. And so she could that. But I had to at the end, I had to help her to get in. Uh, and if she wouldn't cooperate, as sometimes happened, um, I mean, she was too heavy for me just to uh, uh, do something against the will. Uh, so uh, yeah, but I mean, this it wouldn't it wouldn't have mattered though. She'd have stepped in the, the under the table at the front so from the side it was okay um yeah uh otto says funny H hitler was evil but stalin gets the grand slam of psychotic and evil yeah um uh, yeah there's clearly differences between the two because in nazi germany if you uh conformed then you're okay um unless you unless you were jewish or something you know but even people who had been communists, or as long as they just stopped 
what they were doing they were okay uh they weren't they weren't hounded whereas in the soviet union nobody was safe at all and um this is i think uh, uh this is an important this is an important difference between the two of them um so if you've got like for example today i mean putin's russia if you conform you're okay um and uh you can see people who had been once in opposition. There's a strange case actually on Putin. Uh, there was some, his name's um, Rybakov, or um, Julius Rybakov, something like that. I can't quite remember. And he was um, he was a uh, dissident, and he painted some slogans on the in Saint in Saint Petersburg on the wall, sort of Rome, Romans go home or something, or uh, communists go away, whatever it was, and. Um, Putin was the person investigating him. Now, uh, Rybakov was in the opposition to Putin uh, at like 2004, but since around 2008, he's done absolutely nothing, even though he was a, he was a relatively well-known person uh, as being the opposition. He took part in the, in the changes in politics at the beginning uh, in the 1990s in Russia. Uh, so effectively, he conformed, so he'll be okay, uh, even though, although... He's one of the heroes who fought against the Soviet Union. Anyway, uh, so Jessica says he, she's heard a theory that Gailey was murdered. Yeah, I think a lot of people know the, the theory. I don't. I don't think it's true, Jessica. I. I, I really. Um, I. Th I think. I think she was trying to commit suicide to make a. Sorry, I. I don't think she's trying to commit suicide. She murdered herself. Um, I think she was trying to make a point, but she failed. To make the point, yeah, I know what I can do for light. I've got light up here. What's this do? Is that all right? Is that any better? Um, um, yeah, yeah. So, so Colin's uh, book on pyramids could have been one of life's blunders. Yeah, I can imagine what happened there. I can imagine me doing something like that with a couple of women I've been with in the past. Oh, I'd have been, I'd have ended up in hospital. Um, Troutel, uh, Colin writes, Troutel Young and Rockus Mish were as reliable as you can ever get regarding these events, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think actually most of them were pretty reliable. There's one or two who were dodgy, but the thing is like this. I mean, you, you, your memory can go and things like this. And you, you can mix, m miss things up. And another thing is this. You've got to bear in mind uh, the entire environment that existed in that bunker and the fear. I mean, you're not going to sleep properly to start off with because of the air. Uh, you've got the fear. You've got the explosions. You've got uh, living on top of people. So your memory is not going to be that good. What you will remember, the explosions, the fear, the, the ground shaking, but the, the exact the dates and things when things happened, you're going to get pretty confused, I think. Um, OK, uh, Colin says uh, there, there was an unusual incidence of twins in the area where the German doctor visited. I saw a program about it a while ago. Uh, I think that's referring to Mengele. Re Mengele. Thanks. Alan. Yeah. And. Um, oh, uh, and Otto writes, uh, he was a hit with the drunks in his early days. Zu Kneipen. I think that uh, the hit hit with the drunks is referring to Heinrich Hoffmann and. Uh, uh, anyway, three sheets of the wind. Once the crowd got drunk, here comes old Ad Adolf. Okay, very good. Thank you. So um, I think, I, actually, I could say a lot more about it um, ever. Uh, but um, that, what I what I think, I, I will, I'll, I've started actually writing a video, a sort of documentary video, which uh, one day I hope I'll, I, I can get, I, I can publish. The uh, the advantage of doing something like this, though, is that first of all, uh, it doesn't require a huge, it doesn't require any preparation, and the second thing is when you've got noises outside, uh, it's not so bad. So somebody's like trying to park or something behind me, and hear something happens outside, then then it doesn't matter. But when I'm doing, I'm trying to do a, um, a dictate something into the machine uh, onto the machine. I use my telephone, but uh, I uh, then you get noises. You know, so some car goes past, then the church bells go off, and then a boat starts it 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 got to keep stopping so it's much it's much easier to do something like this also um the amount of time it's taken me to upload something at this the video i did on hitler hitler's 56th birthday i've been uploading it for three days it's not very it's it's less than a gigabyte uh uh, sorry, a megabyte. What am I saying? A gigabyte. A, a megabyte. So I, I don't know why it. Sorry, no. Hang on. Listen a minute. What am I saying? It's less than a gigabyte. Sorry. Um. Anyway. 
Um, I've got one video. It's forty-four gigabytes. It's it's it, uh, it's on 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 my, me at Goebbels's house. Uh, it's a pretty long one, but it, you know, it was filmed in uh, in high definition and all the rest of it. Anyway, so uh, thank you for this. Tomorrow, I'm doing a unusual special one. Uh, which is on the Great Train Robbery because it's the 60th anniversary. Great Train Robbery took place in the United Kingdom in Poland. Polish, it's called the Robbery of the Century. And um, I did some research of this. I went to a the uh, the uh, um, archives, National Archives in Kew uh, near London, uh, and. Um, I'm not saying I've come up with anything new because I, I mean lots of people have seen these documents, but the thing is, lots of people have seen them, but not the right people saw them, uh, in my opinion. So I might have something to say on this subject that you don't know, but I'm sure there's lots of people will have questions about it which I'm unable to answer. Uh, I think that could happen as well. So I'm not a true crime sort of uh, person. Oh, sorry, some more questions have come through. Sorry, I missed these. Did ever have autism? Not as far as I'm aware. Uh, thanks, Colin. So no, uh, interesting broadcast. And uh, uh, Jessica, thank you. Um, Hitler died at 56, says Otto. I remember reading how important it was to begin the war with Poland at age 50. Well, still reasonably young. Talk about self-centered, calculated. Undoubtedly, yes. Because uh, his mother died when she was 47. His father was 65. Uh, Francisca, he never met his, his father's second wife. She was, what, 20, 25 uh, when she died. Um, so... Um, Actually, it's turned Angela. Oh, oh, what was she? Sixty, I think, when she died. If I remember rightly. No, she can't have been. Uh, just been a bit older than that. Whatever. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. So, so call, uh, call see, Ronnie Biggs had one job and messed it up. Yep, that's right. Because Ronnie Biggs was doing time. Then he done a bunk. Now he says he's seen the light and sold his soul for punk. So. Uh, thank you for watching and I uh, hope you'll see that tomorrow. Thanks, Janet, Paige, Otto, and all the best for me in Gdansk, Poland. Oh, and please, can you give it a like? Because I, 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 it'd be nice if I got uh, more people watching because uh, then it might help me uh, income-wise. But anyway, that'll be good. Thank you. Bye for now.